Good afternoon. It's me, Pritiani A. Christian. Uh, let me see here. Let me see here. Looking for chapter six. Let me see if I can find it. What do you think? Is it pretty interesting so far? I hope that maybe one or two of you are enjoying it. <laughs> uh, as at, well, I better show you the book. Stones of Emptiness, Chronicle Three of the Abyss by Brittiani A. Christian. And I'm here on my porch reading chapter five of Stones of Emptiness. And this is the back cover. And that's me. <laughs> and of course, uh, like I've read before, uh, this is copyright uh, 2014. And um, this is a division of Riseville, Riseville's publishers. My son publishes the books. And of course it's self-published. It's with uh, KD, KDP, <laughs> uh, Kindle uh, Publishing. And uh, we've got it on Kindle. And they just now offered us this, the paper bags. So I got them put into paper bags. And I'm really excited about that. So you can purchase these on Amazon.com by Brittiani A. Christian. I have four published so far of the Chronicles. I have number five that I'm working on in here. <laughs> I've got three or four chapters written down. And of course my uh, books are all seven chapters. So um, I've got that almost done. So, uh, okay, this is copyright. Text and photos are copyright by Brittiani A. Christian. Uh, any similarity to those living or dead is purely coincidental. coincidental. And the, the people, persons and places, most of them are inventions of the author. So let's get busy and find out. An oath challenged? Hmm. Mikhail blinked in the bright sunlight as he shoved his suitcase into the trunk of the new silver car. It was a beautiful morning and the wedding was in just a few hours. He was looking forward to the wedding and to seeing Rose again. He loves Rose. <laughs> he was so engrossed in his thoughts as he opened the car door that he didn't see the late model black car pull up to the curb in back of the car. Suddenly, two men grabbed him from behind and shoved him into the waiting car. Mikhail tried to fight back, but the men were too strong for him. Then he heard a familiar laugh, laugh and stopped resisting the men. Ah, my friend, the familiar voice laughed in English, always fighting what is inevitable. Gustav, what are you doing? Mikhail answered him angrily in English. I thought I told you I would be in touch with you. Why are you doing this? I have a very important, important appointment to keep. I don't have time for this nonsense. Uh, I know all about your plans. 
I know about your flight to Cyprus this morning to meet with your pretty American girlfriend. How old is she? 25? 30? You're p p picking them young these days. But she will have to wait. We have important things to discuss. Mikhail didn't answer. He knew better than to try and argue with Gustav. Gustav was a bully and would never let up until he had all that he wanted from someone. Mikhail had more than one scar from his tussles with, Guf with Gustav when they were young. So he just sat back and watched as they went through back alleys and side streets to an old abandoned warehouse. Gustav's goons roughly pulled him out of the car and into the warehouse. The warehouse was filled with old junk and trash, and Mikhail could smell the horrible stench of rat urine and rat feces. The place had to be overfront, overrun with rats, and he hated rats. They shoved him into a chair and turned on a light on the table next to the chair. Gustav leered at him and smiled and lapsed, lapsed into Russia. You thought you could forget about me? You thought you could run away from me? You've tried before, Mikhail, and it never worked. Since you agreed to do this job, I haven't stopped watching you. I thought maybe you would back out, and I see by the look in your eyes I was right to be worried. What do you want from me, Gustav? I've changed my mind. I'm not going to be involved in this crazy scheme anymore. I realize now it's ab absolute foolishness to try to stop a huge project like the Abyss. Oh, you didn't think it was so foolish after Aunt Anna died. In fact, you were dying to stop them from destroying the earth. You believed then that the experiment had caused Anna's death. Why would you give up on this when you know how dangerous this experiment is? It's going to destroy the earth. Don't you care anymore about the people on this planet or your children? You have children. I myself have five children and grandchildren. I'm frightened and worried for them if this experiment is allowed to continue. I thought you knew it had to be done. You're a doctor. You save lives. What is it all for if this monstrous plan of theirs continues? Gustav continued with a worried look on his face. If they succeed in opening up a black hole or wormhole, as they like to call it, they will destroy the earth. The earth will be swallowed up and maybe even the universe. We can't allow this, Mikhail. They must be stopped for your children's sake and for mine. You will have to send someone else. I'm not going, Mikhail answered defiantly. You will have to find some other crazy person that would be willing to commit suicide to do what you want someone to do. I have a life now. I want to live. Ah, I see. The American woman. You have fallen for her. I watched you at the Wailing Wall. I knew you had fallen in love with that pretty young thing. Gustav shook his head. You can't just stop. I won't let you. You must go through with this plan to save the world. My superiors were very anxious to have you as our operative, operative. Your experience as a doctor would give you easy access to much there at the abyss. I'm not doing it, Gustav, Mikhail answered fiercely. His handsome face then twisted into a horrible skull that made Gustav shrink back. He knew when he had pushed Mikhail too hard. There were many times when they were young that Mikhail would come back at him swinging. And what, and he was a formidable opponent when he was angry. 
You'll have to find someone else. My life is different now. When I told you I would help you after you approached me, I was in despair. I had just lost Anna and didn't care what happened to me. But things have changed and I'm happier than I've been in a long time. I love the woman and I want to spend whatever time we have left in this world with her. Besides, if they continue, Mikhail's voice trailed off. He didn't know if he should tell Gu Gustav what Joshua had been telling him about what was going to happen if the scientists working on the abyss continued on their course. Gustav grabbed him by the scruff of the neck. Tell me, he shouted hoarsely, what's going to happen if they continue? Gustav suddenly let Mikhail go and coughed and wheezed heavily as if he had lost his breath. He then lit his cigarette and blew the smoke lazily into Mikhail's face. Mikhail looked straight ahead, debating in his mind if he should tell him what Joshua had told him. Gustav, we can't stop them. It's been foretold thousands of years ago, 2000 to be exact. They're going to open up the, that black hole, that abyss. Someone showed me prophecies and I'm beginning to believe what they say is going to happen. Gustav laughed hysterically. So those American Christians have gotten to you with their Christian fairy tales. You believe what they say about their Jesus being the Messiah? You know it's nothing but myths and fairy tales. Children's stories, not reality. They are deluding themselves and everyone else. So you believe their story about an event called the rapture, everyone disappearing. Aha, I've heard the tales from many that have defected from our Jewish faith and call themselves Jesus, Jews. Have you become one of those messianic believers? He shouted as he threw back his burly head and laughed. As Mikhail watched him, he hadn't realized how old and gray his friend had become. Life had not been easy for Gustav. He looked 20 years older than his true age. He had spent his life working on the shipping docks and it had aged him and made him hard and cold. Then Gustav shouted again, you are deluded, my friend. You are crazy. Honest death has destroyed your mind. Mikhail clinched his fist. He would have loved to have knocked Gustav down about now. He knew his weaknesses. If he just hit him in his knee, that he had just gotten fixed through surgery. Mikhail shook away the thoughts. He was a healer, not a destroyer. He answered Guf Gustav, slowly gauging his words. I'm starting to believe in what they say. I think Jesus just might be the Messiah. He chose to die a cruel, horrible death on a Roman cross instead of running away. His disciples died horrible deaths too because they proclaimed the truth about him being the very God of heaven. Gustav stopped him and screamed louder trying to drown out Mikhail's voice of reason. It's all lies. Are you so easily fooled? His disciples stole his body. Everyone knows that. It's all stupid lies. Gustav sputtered hoarsely as spittle fell from his chin. He grabbed his spotless handkerchief from his perfectly pressed pant, pant pocket and wiped his bright red face. He was so angry, he felt like throttling Mikkel, but he couldn't. He loved Mikkel like a brother. They had been childhood friends in Russia. Gustav's parents had made Aliyah to Israel with his family, the same as Mikkel's parents had done. Mikkel had also saved his precious wife's life when she needed heart surgery. She was the first girl he had met when he came to Israel and had fallen in love with her instantly. And even though he wasn't handsome, 
the beautiful girl favored him and eventually married him when they were old enough. She was the woman he loved so much and she took such good care of him and their children. And she had almost died. His heart twisted in agony at the very memory of it. Why would any man give up their lives for a lie? Mikhail answered as Gustav's mind snapped back to the present. Mikhail stared boldly into Gustav's reddened eyes. If it was a lie, why didn't they recant when they were threatened by death? You would have, I would have. Mikhail kept saying more to himself than to Gustav as he put his blonde head in his hands. No, there is something more to this man Jesus from what I've been hearing. I know Gustav, we have believed a certain way our whole lives. This is a new and strange way to believe. We'll believe Messiah is coming back to set up his kingdom, Israel. But we have denied it was Jesus for 2000 years. The man standing next to Mikhail looked familiar, was watching him oddly, as though he was actually listening to what Mikhail was saying. Then he realized it was Gustav's older son, a more handsome and younger version of Gustav. People die every day for what they believe in, Gustav said in disgust, from Muslim suicide bombers and others with crazy ideologies. Gustav had to strain to hear what Mike Mikhail said next. Just as I said, they die because they believe in their religion Jesus' disciples believed in what they were telling everyone. They saw him die, and then they saw him after he rose again from the dead. I was shown in their Bible that more than 500 people saw him after he rose from the dead. 500? That's a huge number of witnesses. It's a book of lies, Mikhail. The ones that wrote it are liars. Gustav answered him weakly. Mikhail could tell the conversation was taking its toll on Gustav, making him tire visibly in front of his eyes. Really, Gustav? Their Christian Bible has 25,000 original manuscripts that have been authenticated as antiquities. Mikhail said excitedly with hope in his eyes. Even some of the oldest books in the world only have one or two original copies. You're right, Gustav. The more that I think about it, the more I believe it. I am starting to believe what I've heard from their Bible. And if they are right, then we cannot stop what's going on now at the abyss. It will happen just as it has been prophesied. The abyss will open up and destroy Babylon. I believe it will happen as the Bible says, and I also believe that the whole will stop right there and not go any further. I myself was reading about experiments with the vortexes in their, our oceans. They behave very much as black holes do. They suck in matter and debris from the ocean, but they have a boundary and stop. Nothing else can be sucked in. It stops at the boundary. If this is true about black holes, that what it says in their Bible about the abyss opening up is true. And I believe it will stop at a boundary and not destroy the whole earth. It even says in the book of Isaiah in the Old Testament that the world will, come, will be able to come and look into the abyss and to see the uh, carcasses of the people who have transgressed against God. It says it's a place where the worm never dies and the flames are never quenched. We don't have to worry about our worst case scenario fears. The, the earth will not be swallowed up. Mikhail visibly, visibly shuddered from the horror, horror, horrid imagery, Im, imagery in his mind and then went on. I'm sorry. <laughs> Gustav, listen to me. I'm a doctor. I don't believe in the abstract. 
I believe in truth. I have to be shown something to be true before I believe it. I think there is has to be something to this. And if Jesus is the Messiah, he is the powerful and almighty God to almighty God to have resurrected himself from the grave after being dead for three days. What his word says about him is real. And we can stand safe if we accept him and believe what is written about him is true. I was shown even our in our Old Testament, it is written where where it is written there about Jesus suffering and dying in the book of Isaiah. That book was written 700 years before he was born. Let me drink some more. Very interesting, isn't it? <laughs> Mikkel, sounds like he's starting to believe. I wonder if he'll be able to convince his old friend, Gustav. Let's continue. Gustav threw back his burly, burly head and laughed hysterically. He was shaking in rage now. Mikkel was afraid he would have a heart attack if he continued in his anger. So he just stopped talking and sat and watched quietly. You are a crazy man. You've lost your mind. I don't want to talk to a crazy man like you anymore. Stand up and empty your pockets. Mikhail stood up and put everything that was in his pockets on the table. The pocket knife of gold Rose had given him shone brightly in the dull light of the lamp. Gustav picked it up in his uh, picked up the knife and turned it around in his hand. I was watching that day. She gave this to you, Gustav whispered so softly that Mikhail had to strain to hear. And how did you expect to get past airport security with this? Gustav shouted at Mikhail loudly. Mikhail could have kicked himself. He had forgotten to leave the knife at home on his dresser when he was getting ready to go. Gustav turned it over and over again in his hand, as if fascinated by the piece. Well, I will tell you what. If you decide to help us, I will give you back this knife. But if you don't, if you don't, then I will keep this for my collection. Give him back everything out of his pockets and let's get out of this stink hole. Gustav's men watched as Mikhail put everything back into his pockets and watched Mikhail's clenched fists in amusement. They were just waiting for him to do anything to stop Gustav so they can teach this fine, handsome doctor a thing or two. Mikhail just waited as the men grabbed him and led him out to the car and shoved him into the back seat. It wasn't a moment later that they were back at his house. They shoved him roughly out of the car and drove furiously away. Mikhail stood there angrily and watched as they sped away. They had taken Rose's, Rose's precious gift away from him, the gold pocket knife she had bought him. How could he ever tell her? He went back into the house, avoiding Irma, his housekeeper, his housekeeper's questioning, questioning eyes, and jumped into the shower. After drying off, he quickly changed into fresh clothes. As he looked at his watch, he noticed his hands were still trembling. The hands that were always steady as a rock, even after a night of drinking. He dismissed his thoughts as he looked at the time on his watch and realized that he still had time to make the flight to Cyprus if he really hurried. He took the bottle on his dresser of amber liquid and poured himself a drink. After he swallowed the last bit, his hands started to stop shaking and became steady. As the familiar feeling washed over him, he knew everything was going to be all right. Mikhail grabbed his bag and rushed past Irma without speaking to her. 
He ran out the door to the outside and jumped into the car. Irma stopped at the window, shaking her head and watching the good driver, doctor, drive away. He sure has been acting strange lately, she thought to herself as she turned away. She walked back to his bedroom to pick up the laundry to wash. When she picked up his clothes off the floor, she could hardly believe it. They reeked of rat droppings. What was going on? She had never had this happen since she had started working for the good doctor and his wife 10 years ago. She shook her head in bewilderment. She was sure it had to do with the American Christian man that had been staying here. But she just shrugged her shoulders and went outside to look for her husband to tell him about the good doctor's strange behavior this morning. Mikhail drove the distance to Tel Aviv, deep in thought about all that had happened this morning. Did he really believe what he had told Gustav? Did he believe that Jesus was Messiah? Joshua had presented his case for Jesus to him so very compellingly. All the late evenings they had spent talking in his home. But did he really believe in Jesus? as the very God of heaven. As he told Gustav he did this morning, do you believe there was a Trinity, three persons in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, so perfectly in agreement, said Joshua, that they are one God? There were so many compelling things that Joshua had revealed to him all those late nights. He kept pondering on all these things as he drove. Finally, his thoughts turned to Rose, and soon all he could think about was seeing her again. Yes, the very thought of Rose quieted his spirit. Everything was going to be all right. They would be married soon, and all this would be put behind him, and he could start a new life together with her. Yes, as soon as they got back from Babylon, they would be married. He wouldn't let anyone or anything stand in his way of making that happen. Not Gustav and his goons, not Joshua and Aunt Abby, not anyone. Well, that's the end of chapter six. I think it's really interesting. I think that it shows us what God's plans are. It does say in Revelation that the abyss will be opened by the star that fell from the sky. And, and you know, like Pastor Riley said in his sermon, that star is Lucifer. I know that to be true. And he was the, given the key to the abyss, and we believe it's a computer. All the scientists all over the world with one mind. Hmm. Interesting, huh? Well, let's do chapter seven next. I probably will drop it in the morning. Okay, dear ones. I love you. I'll see you again soon. Bye-bye.